Hey, what's up guys? So today's video is going to be covering the more advanced combos of the Punk Adventure deck. I'm going to be highlighting two very important ones that you should definitely know and that you should be definitely paying attention to if you're playing this deck. So let's get right into it. All right, so the first combo that we're going to be covering is essentially uh, highlighting what I covered in the first video, which is the importance of Foxy Tune, which allows you to get an extra level 3 extender onto the board enabling some really really cool combos so let's highlight this one i think you might be able to learn something uh, from the sequence here so i'm going to start off with foxy tune um, the main reason why i start off with foxy tune is because uh, my opponent is less likely to ash it especially if they're trying to play around like gamma for example so i like starting off with foxy tune instead of normal summon sangan um, also mainly because if foxy tune does resolve then I don't necessarily make Omraj with Sangan. So these are the type of sequencing decisions that I'm considering and thinking about as I like play my hand out. Um, now I'm going to be summoning the Aemon. I'm going to use Aemon's effect to search a Punk Monster. My opponent has a couple of decisions at this point. Uh, first of all, whether they uh, Valor this or they Ash this, right? Um, one of the main things about playing more than the 1, 2, 3 Punks or like playing just one Aemon, one Foxy, and one Dia Note is that if you play more Punks in your hand, uh, like let's say I have another aim in my hand, I can actually search Dia Note and then use Dia Note to reveal the other aim and summon it from the hand. So my opponent is in an uh, interesting predicament here from a hand trap perspective. Um, anyways, I activate aim in here to search. Um, I'm just going to grab Dia Note. Um, let, let's just assume my opponent doesn't have any interruptions, but these are like the type of choke points and considerations that you need to be thinking about if you're on the other side of uh, this you know, sequence. I'm then going to be normal summoning Sangan. I'm going to convert both of these monsters into Cheribini, okay? And then I'm going to be activating Sangan's effect to search Arborea. I'm going to be using Arborea's then, um, effect to... I'm sorry, uh, Cheribini's effect to send Enchantress. And then use Enchantress' effect to get rights. And then I'm going to activate rights into the zone that Cheribini points to. Uh, this is a very crucial point about the combo because... If you've noticed, uh, this combo actually once I, I want to highlight... I guess, a very important um, interaction that people may not be aware of, which is that you can actually collector the summon of your own token. And in, in this scenario here, a trigger has been met, right? Which is the summon of a token um, or the special summon of a token. And monsters that Tribuny points to cannot be destroyed by card effects. So I purposely activated rights to summon a rights token to a zone that Tribuny points to. And then I collector myself on purpose because if you were counting, uh, this is actually the fourth summon, and then uh, Collector would be the fifth summon. The reason why I will Collector myself is that when Collector is on the field, uh, neither player can special summon tokens, which means that I will be essentially nib-proof. Um, and this sequence doesn't always necessarily come up, but it's a very important interaction that you need to be aware of, that when you do make cards like Tribuny, you should be summoning the right token to a zone that Tribuny points to so that you can play around your opponent's collector. But in the, um, but in the other circumstance that you also should consider is that you can actually collector yourself some, so that you can uh, prevent yourself from getting Nibrood and also get a free level 4 extender on top of your board. Um... And then I'm going to trigger the Faithful Adventure um, as Chainlink 2. Collector's going to be, uh, it's mandatory, so it'll be Chainlink 1 Collector to destroy all tokens. Chainlink 2 Faithful Adventure to search. Now, um, at this point, uh, I'm going to activate the effect of Faithful Adventure to search my Draco back and then discard it. Uh, or search my Griffin Rider and then pitch Draco back, re-equip Draco back. Now I'm going to special summon the Griffin. I did a little movie here, but yeah, because I search Arborea, you should definitely make sure that you don't clog up the other... Um, arrow that Tribuny points to so you're able to special summon Arborea. We're then going to make Hulky Fibrax here and then use Hulky Fibrax effect to summon Red Rose. Use both of them to summon Baron de Fleur and then trigger Red Rose to summon a Rox Rose. Use Rox Rose effect to search Basil Rose Shoot. Activate Basil... Um, use Rox Rose and the level 4 Rice token to make Shooting Risers. Send Snow. Activate Basil Rose Shoot. Bring back Dagda. And now you essentially have um, a Dagda, Fiber, Baron... Uh, collector, so your opponent cannot activate their rights unless they um, and unless they droplets you. And it's really important that this is the sequence because a lot of plays that people will do to gain advantage out of their drops is they would do something like chain link one rights, chain link two droplets. But now they can't even legally attempt to go chain link one right 
um, wild collectors on the board, which makes it very difficult for them because they would have to discard other cards, um, such as Enchantress, um, specifically, or like other cards instead if they do have droplets. And something important to know, so I keep this on the board here. And you essentially set up the same board that I originally showed in like the basic combo um, from the prior, prior video. And if you haven't watched that already, uh, definitely go check that out. But this is definitely more of like the advanced situation here. Um, understanding these different combo lines, understanding these different sequences, understanding like uh, specific interactions like the one I'm showing right now. All right, so now I'm going to be showing you a second replay. And this replay uh, involves around like how do you play around, um, you know, droplets? How do you play around Dark Ruler? Especially if you open uh, really well, right? And I think like that's the thing that a lot of players need to understand that as you open better, your end board should convert or represent, uh, you know, something better than the standard board, right? I, if you looked at the past video, you've seen that, like, the standard board is Helky Fibrax, Dagda, Baron, the Fleur. Well, now, if you open, like, more pieces of your engine, like, uh, the goal should be to convert that into more advantage and also more inter in interactions with your opponent. Um, I've seen people open, like, really, really good, but at the same time, they end on, like, a very mediocre or average board. And now you have to also understand how to maximize your cards, um so that you can end on like uh, basically a very, um, very, very uh, a lot of varied disruptions. So in this interaction, we're going to basically showcase, you know, you have right Sangan, but now let's say you have an extra teleport on, on top of your combo, right? So um, basically this, this also works with like any way to Hulky Fibrax, um, you know, with, with rights as well, as well as like a, as an extender in the form of like teleport. Um, or like a way to like chaos ruler essentially. So basically I do my, it's very important. You'll see that I actually do my, um, red rose combo first before I attempt to go a teleport to mill as many cards as possible. The main reason I do this is because I don't want to mill Griffin Rider. I don't want to mill Basil Rose Shoot because Basil Rose Shoot is going to be how I play around, um, droplets and, and, and dark ruler or more. So, so that's like the main reason. It is important to note that if my opponent were to send a spell for droplets, I would be unable to respond with Basil Rose Shoot and then chain Hot Red. But uh, here, uh, before I make um, shooting Riser Dragon with Rockstars and a level 4 token, I'm going to be using Teleport. And the, the main reason I do this is because I don't know what I'm going to be milling. So if I mill Collector, I want my Rockstars and, and, and my shooting Riser to send Snow. And if I mill Snow, I want to send Collector. So... But if I don't mill anything at all, then I'm going to be choosing Snell game one because it's like a way better card. So that's basically why I, I held on to like not sending off Riser yet. Um, but you'll see that I then make, I go for the punk combo. I mill five. And, and the goal here is that you want to get a hand trap off Chaos Ruler because it plays around your opponent, uh, Dark Ruler and Drop Landing your board. And then the second reason is because you want to be able to bring back Foxy Tune and mill any level, any level one tuner. The reason why you want to mill any level one tuner is because you'll then be able to bring back Hot Red, um, and or sorry, bring back Chaos Ruler. Use the level one tuner to make a Hot Red on top of your end board, and it's really important to be able to do that. Um, and you'll see that here. I'll mill for. Um, I'm gonna be summoning Sangan here, which is an even better mill because I I've hit already the Jet Synchron. But hypothetically, if I didn't hit Sangan, I hit Jet Synchron. I would bring Jet Synchron back in this zone. I would then use um, I would then use Rocks Rose and the four to make Shooting Riser and send Snow. I would then use Shooting Riser and the Zombie to make Dagda. Um, and then I would bring back Chaos Ruler and then use that and Jet Synchron to make a Hot Red. But because I hit Sangan, which is an even better hit, um, I I can like I can basically use its effect to add like another hand trap this is assuming that i didn't use i started off with sangan but i'm just saying that if you got away if you were able to find cards that got you to fibrax for example either magician souls or something along those lines um as with a normal summon hand trap and you didn't like use your sangan as a normal summon you can technically bring back sangan off of vampire which is another important interaction you should definitely be aware of like being able to bring back sangan off vampire link it off and then use it to search a hand trap or an extender or whatever you need for follow up or like, you know, Ash Blossom, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'm just going to add Ash here as to showcase that. Um, if you did, Ash is like probably one of the best generic ones you can add. Um, then you're going to make Shooting Riser, Shooting Riser, uh, Chain Dagda, Set Scythe, Send Snow, uh, Bring Back Chaos Ruler, 
uh, bring back Chick Synchron, make uh, Bar uh, Hot Red. Now, if you want to play around like Dark Ruler, one of the things you could do is you can go Baron, pop the Scythe, standby phase, tag out into Scythe on your opponents in the standby phase. Um, so that's why it's also really important to also make the Shooting Riser last because that allows you to, when you activate Shooting Riser, you want to already have a Dagda up so you can chain Dagda in response to Shooting Riser so you can set the Scythe so that Baron can pop it, put it in the graveyard. And then on the standby phase, you can use Baron's second effect to be able to, to target a level 9 or lower monster in the graveyard, uh, return it back to the extra deck, and then bring back the Scythe. And then um, on, uh, on your opponent's main phase, you can still summon uh, Wonder Magician, but instead of popping your back row, you'll pop one of their back row. And then you'll use the Scythe with the Wonder Magician to make another Baron that you put back. So you don't need multiple Barons, you only need one. Um, so that's, you know, like something to also like consider. The reason... Um, and then there's like shooting razor on the board as well. So um, I would say these are pretty much like the, sort of like the advanced plays you should definitely know and be uh, aware of for the Punk Adventure deck. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you like content like this and want more informative guides, let me know and I'll do that for you. I'll see you guys in the next one and let me know in the comment section below what other decks you want me to cover. Peace.